Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Thank God for another day. Amen. We thank God for being in the land of the living. We welcome you to Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. I am Pastor Sheila Johnson, and I am delighted to be before your presence in the Lord today. Amen. So today is Sunday, October the 16th. We magnify God for this day and time and space. Amen. To come together in virtual fellowship and to praise the name of the Most High. Amen. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God. Amen. For our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We magnify God for his goodness, his mercy, his grace this morning. Once again, we welcome you to Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. Amen. We're going to open up our Sunday morning worship with prayer and go into the message for today. Amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we humbly and graciously come before your presence with thanksgiving upon our heart, Lord. We thank you for the wonderful things that you're doing in our life. We thank you for our life. We thank you for our health and our strength, Lord. We thank you for your love, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your yes. grace. Lord, we thank you because you are a good God, Lord Jesus, yes. and there is no fault in you. We magnify your name for bringing us into the knowledge of the truth, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, we bless you right now. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you have done. Lord, we thank you because you are a prayer and answering God. Lord, we thank you for the deliverances that you've sent. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the comfort. Lord, we thank you for all things, your provision. Lord, you're just wonderful to us, your people, Lord. Help us to continue to look to you and trust in you, Lord. We ask your blessings upon those that are on the prayer list today, Lord Jesus. You know every need. You know every circumstance, Lord. And even those that tune in, Lord Jesus, you know the prayer requests that are on their heart. And we ask that you fulfill the request, Lord, according to your will and according to your riches and glory. Lord, we thank you because you can do all things yes. but fail. You can do all things but lie. We thank you for your your promises. Your promises are true. And all your promises are yes. yay and amen. And we thank you for that, Lord Jesus. You, we Jesus. ask your blessings upon this service today, upon the word today, Lord Jesus. Open up our hearts to receive your word. Open up our minds to comprehend. Bless us. Give us understanding. Yes. Give us wisdom, Lord Jesus. Give us strength, Lord Jesus, to continue on in faith. Bless us like never before. Help us in every way, Lord. We need you now more than ever before. We need you this moment, this yes. hour. Amen. This minute, this second. We need you always, Lord. And we thank you for being available to us. We thank you for your presence in this place. We magnify yes. you always in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. So we praise God on this morning. We say hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Amen. Because he's the only one worthy. Yeah. Amen. We are excited. Amen. Because God has put the joy of the Lord inside of us. Everyone who has the Holy Ghost, has the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. has joy. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for the joy that's on the inside. Amen. Once again, we welcome you to Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. Uh, let's go ahead and turn into our scriptures for this morning. Amen. Uh, do you have your Bibles, your hard copy Bibles, your smart devices, however you access the word of God, or if you're just going to listen in and go back and research the scriptures later, that's okay. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading will come from Job chapter 9, <clears throat> and then we'll go to Job 38. So all of our scripture reading this morning, the reading is going to be in the book of Job, but of course we're going to expound on other scriptures. Job chapter 9, from there we're going to go to Job chapter 38, and we will conclude our scripture reading in Job chapter 40. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Job chapter 9. Then we're going to go to Job chapter 38. And then Job chapter 40. One verse out of Job chapter 40. Okay, Job chapter 9, verses 2 through 4. We're going to read, and it says, I know it is so of a truth, but how should man be just with God? If he will contend with him, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. 
who hath hardened himself against him and has prospered. Amen. Let me read that one more time. Job chapter 9, verses 2 through 4. It says, I know it is so of a truth, but how should man be just with God? If he will contend with him, meaning if man will contend with God, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered? Amen. Let's go to Job chapter 38. <clears throat> and we're going to read verses 1 through 6. And the scripture reads, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Amen. Uh, let's go to Job chapter 40. And we're going to read verse 2 there. Job chapter 40, verse 2. And it reads, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Amen? Amen. Amen. That will conclude our scripture reading for this morning's message. And as a topic on this morning, we'll use the topic, don't contend with God. He is right all the time. Amen. Don't contend with God. He is right all the time. Amen. Amen. So the word contend means to struggle, to resist, to oppose, to argue with, to assert yourself insist to state or to declare amen so we don't want to be found struggling with god we don't want to found, be found resisting god and we don't want to oppose god amen amen, amen. so going back to our scripture easy uh and and just with the topic alone don't contend with god he's right all the time amen and we have to understand that God can do what he wants to do because he's the creator. God can do anything that he wants to do because he is the creator. Amen. Amen. So Job chapter 9 says, I know it is so of a truth, but how shall man be just with God? So this is Job speaking, under, he's speaking wisdom. He says, if man contends with God, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. He can't even match God. Like if they went to court, you know, uh, he would stand up to try to defend himself. He would never be able to match the judge of all the earth. Amen. So we can't go in the courtroom and think that we're going to win any case against God. Amen. He is the judge and he is the creator. So man cannot even touch him. He cannot answer him one of a thousand. He doesn't know everything. And so he's, he's no match for God. And he goes on to say, verse 4, he said, he is wise in heart. So one thing about Job, he knew that God was wise in heart. And it says and he's mighty in strength. So uh, nobody could contend with him. He said, who hath ever hardened himself against him? So who have hardened themselves against God and has prospered? So nobody can harden themselves against God and prosper. You, I mean, there's a lot of people that harden themselves against God, but we know in the end it's not going to be beneficial to them. It's not going to prosper them in any way, right? Now, the only thing that we can stand up with God is hold him true to his promises, right? 
Anything else, we might as well be quiet. Amen. Now, God is faithful to his word. You know, he'll He'll hold true to his promise. Amen. But nobody can harden himself against God and prosper. Amen. So because he said here that he's wise in heart, he understands that God is all-knowing. God is omniscient. He knows everything. We are finite people. We are limited in the things that we know. Anything we know comes from God. Amen. It comes from God's knowledge bank. Amen. So he is all knowledge. Amen. We just have a little of that knowledge. And he said that he is mighty and strength. So God is all powerful. He's almighty. So nobody can wrestle with him and win because he's all powerful. He, nobody can outpower God. He has the ultimate in power. Amen. So uh, he's all knowing. He's all powerful. So we as humankind, we as Human beings have to understand that God is not our equal. <laughs> so if we can get anything out of the message of today. God is not our equal. We are no match for God. We don't measure up to God in any way. Amen. So we have to know we have to uh, not contend with God. And if you're contending with God, stop contending with God. Why? Because he's right all the time. Amen. There's no time that God has ever failed. Amen. So we have to understand that. So Job is writing this. Uh, but it's interesting that Job is writing this because we're going to go on down through the scriptures and we saw, we find out through the course of time when Job's friends come and they see how terrible, you know, what state he's in and how he's uh, grieved. And so after a while, uh, they begin to say, you must have done something wrong. You must be in sin for God to have done this, you know, allowed this type of calamity to come upon you, you know, and so Job went into defending himself and he got to a point in his defense that he became self-righteous. Amen. And so we don't want to get to the point where we're self-righteous. We know that the Bible told us when all the calamity struck Job, it said that, you know, he didn't curse God and he didn't charge God foolishly. That's great. And he never rejected God. But at a point in his walk with God, because of his friends coming up against him, attacking him and accusing him, he did uh, try to defend himself and he became self-righteous. Amen. And so God had to call him to answer for that state that he was in. Amen. But we see here in Job 38, amen, it says, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. But before we go that far, let's, let's just go on down. So Job in his state of mind and when his friends were, you know, saying that you must have sinned greatly. Now he said, I'm not claiming to have been perfect. Uh, no, there's nobody perfect. But in his uh, defense of himself, Job didn't think that he warrant, his life warranted the suffering that he was enduring. So he wanted to present his case before God. So he wrote in the Bible and he says, for he is not a man as I am that I should answer him and we should come together in judgment. So he knew that God was not a man like unto him. He said, neither is there a day's man betwixt us that might lay his hand upon both of us. So there's no mediator between me and God right now. Let him take his rod away from me and let not his fear terrify me. Then would I speak and not fear him, but it is not so with me. So it's not the case with me. But Job was saying, I don't think that what I'm suffering, this great calamity, I don't think my life has warranted all of this. So he wanted, again, to present his case before God. But the great thing we want to remember about Job is that he never rejected God and he never cursed God, which is a great thing. He knew that trying to argue with God would be futile. So Job was hoping for a mediator. No, he didn't have one. He called, he said, neither is there a day's man betwixt us. And now another version reads like this. It says, for he is not immortal as I am, that I might answer him, that we should come to trial together. There is no umpire between us who might lay his hand upon both of us. If he would take his rod away from me and not let dread of him terrify me, then I will speak without fear of him, for I know I am not what I am thought to be. So he got to a place where he became self-righteous. Amen. And so we want to be careful that when we go through our situations, we go through our trials and our tests, that we don't contend with God as we go through. Amen. So the Bible again, he says, if he will contend with him, he cannot answer him one in a thousand. So it's futile for us to try to contend with God because he's wise in heart and he's mighty in strength. 
And there's no one ever in the history recorded that has hardened himself against God and has prospered. So we want everyone to know, stop contending with God. Don't contend with God because he's right all the time. Amen. God is always right. Uh, so in Job chapter 9, it says, he answered, I know of a truth. And so he goes on down. He is wise in heart. He's mighty in strength. He said, who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered? So he goes on to explain what God does. In verse 5, he said, he removeth the mountains and they know it not. So God has the power to move a mountain and they don't even know or have knowledge that they've moved. He says, which overturneth them in his anger which shut it, shaketh the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble, which commanded the sun. These are all the things that God does. Amen. He commanded the sun and it riseth not. And he sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea, which makes Arcturus, Orion and Pallades and the chambers of the south which doth great things past finding out. So this is the God we serve. He does great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. So he's always doing something wonderful. Amen. We cannot even count all the wonderful things that God does. He said, lo, this is Job saying, lo, he goeth by me and I see him not. So God can like pass by and we wouldn't know it. He passes on also and I perceive him not. Amen. Behold, he taketh away. Who can hinder him? So if God decides to take something away, who's going to stop him? Wow. Nobody's going to stop God. It said, who will say to him, what doest thou? So we cannot question God and say, what are you doing? You can't do that. We can't tell God that because he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the creator. So that's why Job wrote it. So he says what God does, he moved, he removed the mountains and they don't even know it. So God has all of this power. Amen. So God wants mankind to know that Whatever situation we find ourselves in, we cannot question God or accuse God or contend with God because he's right all the time. And so Job says in uh, 33 uh, verse 13, he said, why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. So God is not accountable to anyone, not any human being. He said, why would you strive against God? So it's a foolish thing to strive against God for any of us. For you and for me, it's a foolish thing for us to contend or strive with God. Because he says he giveth not account of any of his matters. He don't answer to anybody because he is the creator. He is the sovereign one. Amen. And so he said, behold, in this you are not. Not just, I will answer thee that God is greater than man. So this is what Elihu is saying. His friend said this in Job 33, verses 12 and 13. Elihu said to Job, he said, Behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer you that God is greater than man. So anybody today, we have to understand that God is not our equal. He's greater than us. He doesn't give an account to us for anything that he does. And he's right all the time. Verse 13, he said, why does thou strive against him? So Eli, Elihu asked Job, why does thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. Now, before we know that Job said in chapter 9, he said, you know, it's, it's futile to um, contend with God, but here he is because of his friends and he's gotten defensive. Here he is contending. Amen. So we have to understand as people of God and all of our getting, we have to get understanding. God is right all the time, no matter where we find ourselves, whatever situation, what predicament we find ourselves in. We don't want to start blaming God, you know, and going against God, trying to strive with him, contending with him, saying, I don't deserve this. You know, I don't deserve that you know we don't want to get to a place of self-righteousness with God so in all of our getting we have to get an understanding God is right all the time just because you and I don't understand what God is doing in our life at a certain time God doesn't do anything wrong amen it doesn't make God wrong just because we don't understand him. So God wants us to understand that today. Just because we don't understand what's going on in our life does not make God wrong. God is never wrong. God is always right. God is never wrong in his actions. He's never wrong in his judgments. Even David made mention of that. You know, he said, Lord, you're justified when you judge me. You know, he said, I want everybody to be clear. I understand that God is right in his punishment. 
unfortunately. That's what David said. Amen. So if you're not being punished, we have to understand whatever we go through in life. Amen. Whatever struggle, whatever predicament we find ourselves in, if you're not being punished by God, then you're being tested by God. Amen. So we have to understand. So Job, you know, his friends made him feel like he was being punished. So they didn't know the whole picture. They didn't have the master plan of God. And so we have to be careful. We don't have the master plan of God. All we have to do is trust and obey him because we don't know everything. And guess what? God doesn't have to tell us everything. As we go through, we're just going to either be tested or we're going to be punished, whatever the case may be. So if we're not being punished, just relax and be careful what we do in God. We don't want to become self-righteous. If we're not being punished, then either we're being tested right or we're suffering for God's glory. So we have to understand God is never wrong. So not only do we need to not just look on the things that we know, but we don't want to lean to our own understanding because our own understanding can get us in trouble. Amen. And make us want to contend with God. And that's a fight we're not going to win. Amen. We have to understand we're not going to fight against God or strive against God and wrestle with God and win. Amen. So just relax. So if something that you're going through, something that I'm going through, and we don't understand it, uh, if it's not for punishment, now all of us can self-evaluate. We know what we've done in life. And so when we've done wrong, if we're being punished, we have to be like David. Lord, you're right. Against thee and thee alone have I sinned and done this, done this thing. And so you are plain and you're right when you judge. Amen. And so if that's the case, but if you haven't, if it seems like your your life hasn't, been in that place where you're being punished, then consider that maybe you're being tested. We have to consider maybe we're being tried. God had put Job up. He asked Satan, he said, have you considered my servant Job, who's perfect and upright? Amen. So God testified to Job's walk with him, how he walked with God in integrity. Amen. And he even came back a second time and said, you know, even though you moved me against him, he says that he hasn't cursed me. So, so devil, I know my servant. So if we're not being punished, perhaps we are being tested, amen, for God's glory, amen. We remember even in the New Testament, when they came upon the man that was blind and had been blind from his birth, you know, the disciples asked, who sinned, this man or did his parents sin? And Jesus said, neither one of them sinned. This was done for the glory of God. So some things we go through is to give God glory. So we just have to not faint in whatever our trial or our temptation is and continue to look to God. So God does not get the glory when we faint in our tribulations, but when we submit to the temptation, we actually fail God. Amen. We will be tried for our faith in Jesus Christ. We have to remember that, but we just have to continue walking in faith. So we don't want to charge God foolishly. We don't want to curse God. We don't want to reject God, but we also don't want to contend with him. Amen. And so Job went on down he told what God does. Again, he removeth the mountains. He shaketh the earth out of place. He commands the sun. Amen. And he seals up the stars. He spreads out the heavens. Amen. He makes all the different planets. He say he does great things past finding out wonders without number. So we have to sit in our life as a wonder. There are things going on in this galaxy and we know nothing about, but God is every moment, every second. He's working wonders. Amen. He goes by me, he says, and I see him not. So think God is doing stuff. God could be standing right next to you, you know, pretty much. And you don't know anything about it. God can conceal himself like that. We know he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at one time, but he knows how to hide himself. And we are saying to know that, that if we walk with God any length of time. We feel God's presence, but then there's times that we don't feel his presence, but we know his presence is everywhere at the same time. So how does it, how is it that we don't feel his presence? God knows how to hide himself too. Amen. It says, behold, he taketh away and who can hinder God? There's nobody that's going to stop God from doing all that he wants to do. It says, and who shall say unto him, what are you doing? We can't ask God, what are you doing? Uh, if God will not withdraw his anger, the proud helpers do stoop unto him. How much less shall I answer him and choose out my words, amen, to reason with him, whom though I were righteous, Yet would I not answer, but I would make supplication to my judge. So we don't want to try to pull God on the carpet, but we can pray and make our supplications be known. Amen. And so Job found himself in a place, amen, because of his 
friends falsely accusing him, saying that all of this has happened to you because of sin. So the Bible lets us know, in all thy getting, get an understanding, because everything doesn't happen because of sin. Some suffering that the people of God go through is for the glory of God. Some things we go through, amen, is to test our faith, amen. So we have to get an understanding and not get self-righteous with God, because whatever he does, He's right all the time. Amen. So now we get down to Job 38, 1 through 6. It says, then Job answered, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. So he finally got an answer. Amen. God, God let Job do all of his talking. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? So God was letting Job know, you don't know anything. Amen. He said, gird up now your loins like a man. So you so big and you so strong and you so righteous. Come on, gird yourself up. And so God will call us on the carpet like this too. You want to contend with me? You think that you're so right? Get up, stand up, bring your best game on. You know, let's see how you're going to fare. Amen. He said, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? So God began to question people. So God doesn't give account to us, but we do give an account to God. Amen. So stop contending with God because he's right all the time. He says, who hath laid the measures thereof, if y'all, if you know. So the Bible is letting us know after we read all of this. We just have to shut our mouths, amen, because we don't know nothing, amen. If we see how God dealt with Job, we realize, now Job had a little knowledge, a little, um, a, he knew a little bit about the Lord, but it wasn't enough for him to stand up and be self-righteous with God or to contend with God. So God began to show him just how little he did know. He said, who hath laid the measures thereof, if you know, and, and who hath stretched the line upon it? And whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? He know Job didn't know all of this. He said, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? And so we have to understand that we just have to shut our mouth when we stand before God because we don't know nothing. And so sometimes we get self-righteous and God's saying, who do you think you are? So when we begin to want to question God and contend with God, God's going to answer, who do you think you are? You don't measure up with me. You're not my equal. Amen. So all we can do is just humble ourselves and Amen. Under the mighty hand of God, we can't contend with God. He says, we just have to know that we don't know what we're talking about. So he called Job on the carpet. Amen. And so going down to Job chapter 40, verses 1 through 5, it said, moreover, the Lord answered. So God continued on with Job because sometimes God knows just what he has to do to put us in our place when we're trying to contend with him. Amen. We're no match for God. We just have to trust that all that he's doing is right and wait patiently for him. He said, moreover, the Lord said, answered unto Job and said, shall he contended? Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? So you're going to tell me what to do now, Job? You're contending with me. You're going to tell me what to do? I think not. So we cannot tell God what to do. He said, he that reproveth God, let him answer. So if we're going to reprove God and say he's unfair and he's just, we're going to have to answer to it. Amen. Then Job answered the Lord. So here he is. And he said, behold, I am vile. So that's uh, humble yourself under the mighty hands of God. Job had enough sense that he knew he wasn't going to win no battle with God like that when hardening himself against God. He says, behold, I am vile. So even if we don't think that our life deserves what we're going through, we better just shut our mouth and trust in God. He says, I'm vile. So he saw himself now. I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. So that's why I said my subtopic, shut your mouth. You don't know what you're talking about. Shut your mouth. So sometimes we get in trouble. We start running our mouths and saying things. So we just have to shut our mouths. He said, I am vile. What shall I answer you, Lord? He said, I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. So we have to shut our mouths when God starts calling us on the carpet because we don't know anything. You don't know what you're talking about. He's answered all, he's asked all these questions. You didn't have an answer for God. So we don't know anything. We just have to trust God. Amen. So we don't want to be found contending with God. So stop contending with God. Amen. Because it's not going to get us anywhere. He went on to say, uh, God was still talking to uh, Job. 
He says, shall he that contended with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproved God, let him answer it. And so the, the right response, Job said, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? He says, I once have I spoken, but I will not answer, yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. I'm going to stop this foolishness because I know I cannot contend with God. And says, then that answered the Lord of Job. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? So God's judgment is always right. But he asked Job, Wilt thou disannul my judgment? Will you condemn me that thou mightest be as righteous? So we don't want to get in a place where we're trying to condemn God so that we can appear to be righteous. No, I didn't deserve this. I didn't deserve this. Whatever God put us through, we deserve it one way or the other, either for punishment or to be tested for our faith that God would get the glory. He went on to say, hast thou an arm like God? We don't have arms like God. Or can thou thunder with a voice like him? We can't do nothing like God. The only thing we can do is what God allow us to. If, we, if he didn't wake us up in the morning, we wouldn't get up. Uh, if he didn't give us the strength to brush our teeth and comb our hair, we wouldn't be able to do it. So we are not God's equal. So we cannot um, contend with God and say we're how righteous we are. Amen. So now let's go in because Job wasn't the only one that got self-righteous here. We know that the children of Israel, amen, got into a place and God had to bring them to their senses, amen. Isaiah 45, 9 says, woe unto him that striveth with his maker, amen. So why would he say woe unto him that striveth against his maker, amen. Woe unto him is because you're not going to win, amen, against your maker, no matter what we do, no matter what we try. So we might as well stop. And so don't contend with God with whatever. All we have to do is humble ourselves in submission and pray. Amen. The Bible says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt thee in due time. So we have to trust God's time and his judgment. We can't do anything outside of it. Amen. If we do, we're known as what? Bastards. Because God is in control and he rules everything. Amen. So Isaiah 45, 9 through 13 says, Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the parchers strive with the parchers of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou or thy work? He hath no hands. So here the writer is saying, Let the parchers strive with the parchers. Meaning, we down here on earth, we can strive with one another, but we cannot strive with God because we can't say to the one that's making us and fashioning us. He said, he said, shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, what makes thou? So we can't say to God, what are you doing? Or how are you fashioning me? Why am I on the potter's wheel? We can't ask God that. Amen. We just have to surrender to his will for us. We pray the prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But do we really mean it? Because when God starts performing his will in our life, do we surrender or do we try to resist or contend? He says, so we can't, uh, the clay can't say to him that fashion is what makest thou, or you can't say, well, I have no hands, you know, woe unto him that saith unto his father, who can say to their father, what begettest thou, or to the woman that bear thee, what hast thou brought forth? We can't say to our mother, what have you brought forth? Or we can't say to our father, what did you beget? Thus, thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. I have made the earth. So here's God telling who he is now because a lot of times we as people of God want God to be accountable to us. But he says, I'm the creator. He said, I have made the earth and I created man upon the earth. So he's letting us know who created us. He said, I even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their host have I commanded. So I made man, and I made the heaven and the earth. I stretched out the heavens, and I commanded it. Amen. He said, I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. Amen. He shall build my city. He's talking about Cyrus at this point. Uh, he shall build my city, and he shall let my captives go, not for price nor reward, said the Lord of hosts. So God was using King Cyrus. Amen. Even though he was not 
of the children of Israel and say, even though King Cyrus didn't know me, I'm going to use him. So God can use whoever he desires to use. And we cannot contend with who God desires to use. Amen. We can't say, Lord, what are you doing? God is the creator of the heaven and the earth. He can use anybody he wants to use. And in this case, he used King Cyrus. Amen. He says, I have raised him up and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and he shall let my captives, let go my captives, not for price nor reward, said the Lord of hosts. And Jeremiah also tells us a little bit about contending with the Lord. He said in Jeremiah 50, 24, I have laid a snare for thee. Thou art also taken, O Babylon. So this was written for Babylon. It said, and thou was not aware. Thou art not found and also caught because thou hast striven against the Lord. So anybody that strives against the Lord, God is going to take care of it. He said to Babylon, he said, I've laid a snare for thee and you're taken. He said, you weren't even aware. He said, you are found and also caught. Amen. So God knows how to catch people. He knows how to stop people. So we have to be careful about trying to strive against the Lord. Amen. Sometimes being kind, we get so pompous and we get so holy and so righteous. We think God owes us an answer. Well, God is not accountable to us for anything. Amen. We remember what happened when Jesus Christ walked the earth. Amen. How the Pharisees and the scribes thought that they were going to demand of God to give them an answer. We know the story in Matthew. It says, and when the day they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples saying unto them, go into the village over against you and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a cult with her. Loose them and bring them to me. So Jesus Christ has given his disciples some um, instructions. And if any man say aught to you, you shall say the Lord hath needed them. So we know the Lord can do anything he wants to do. He told him, he said, if anybody asks you anything, because I'm telling you what to do now. We know that Jesus Christ was the son of God. Amen. Amen. Sent forth by God. He said, he said, if any man say aught to you, you shall say the Lord hath needed them and straightway he will send them. So some people know, hey, if the Lord said it, leave it alone. Do whatever the Lord says. He said, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek and sitting upon an ass and the colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went, here they go. He went and they did as Jesus commanded. Amen. Because he was the king of Israel, right? Amen. Coming unto them meek and sitting on an ass, but they expected their king to come in on a stallion, I guess. Amen. But anyway, it says, the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes and they set him there on. They, so they set Jesus on them and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. He said he's coming in the name of the Lord. So what authority did he have? He came in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And then it tells what he did next after he came in, right? Came into Jerusalem. It says, and Jesus went into the temple of God. Now here, this is Jesus. He went into the temple of God. And what did he do? He cast out all of them that sold and brought in the temple. So here he is coming in and he's casting people out of the temple. And he overthrew the table of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. So here he is. He's coming in with some power and some authority. And he didn't cast stuff in the temple. And so it goes on down later on. The scribes and the Pharisees, they wanted to call him on that and wanted him to be accountable to them. And so it says, and when he was coming to the temple, when Jesus came into the temple, here it is. We got the men here. The chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and they said, by what authority doest thou these things? And who gave you this authority? So here they is. They, here they are. They're coming into Jesus. Here he is teaching in the temple. And these men want Jesus to give account of himself. And so how did Jesus respond to that? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will 
I also will ask you one thing. So I got something. So you want to ask me, just like God talked to Job. Amen. If we're going to call God on the carpet and talk to God, God is going to talk back to us. Amen. And so Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. And so we know he went on and he asked him about the baptism of John the Baptist. Was it of God and was it of men? And so they kind of played around with it because they didn't want to get trapped in their answer. And then they came up with a lie. And it says, and they answered Jesus, we cannot tell. They knew where it was from, but they were just disobedient. But they said, we cannot tell. And he said unto them, neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. And so God doesn't answer to man. So man tried to trap Jesus. Uh, Jesus, you will never win a fight contending with the Lord. Amen. The only reason why he laid down his life is that he would bring us in. Otherwise, they could do nothing with the Lord. Amen. So Romans comes on down in the same spirit. So we went from the Old Testament to the time of Jesus and coming down to the New Testament, telling the same thing. So Paul was writing to the children, uh, the uh, saints at Rome. He said, as it is written, he's talking to them about God. He's saying what God has said, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So, hated. so this is God saying he loved Jacob, but he hated Esau. And then verse 14 said, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God. So the whole point we brought up earlier, God is always right. So Paul here asked, he said, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? And then he answers it. God forbid. So there's never any unrighteousness in God. God is right all the time. If he said he loved Jacob and he ate Esau, he's right all the time. Who We can't contend with that. We can't ask God. Well, Lord, no, we cannot because he's the creator. He knows all things. He knows what's in all men. Amen. And it says, for he said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. So God can do whatever he want to do. And it's right. Amen. We remember the story, the parable in the, in uh, the gospels talking about how he went out and he hired the people to work. And so the ones that came at the end of the day, he paid them just as much as he paid the ones that began at the beginning of the day. And so they began to contend with him and say, uh, Lord, wait a minute. We, we worked in the heat of the day and you've given them the same pay that you gave us. He said, I gave you what I agreed with you for. So how can you say that I'm wrong if I want to pay somebody else the same amount that I paid you? I paid you. I was right. I paid you what I told you I was going to pay you. So that's what I said. We cannot contend with God. God is always right. He said, for he said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So whoever God is merciful, merciful to and whoever he's compassionate to, he's right about it. He says, so then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but it's of God that showeth mercy. And he went on down to say, um, let me just read it down so we can get to the whole thing. It says, for the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up. So God has a purpose for everything he does. We may not understand it. You know, the Bible says, all you're getting, get understanding. But if you don't understand it, don't try to fight against God just because you don't understand. He said, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So he did all that with Pharaoh so that he would get some glory. Remember early I say God can do some things for his glory. He said, therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will he would harden. So he hardened Pharaoh so that he can get the glory out of all, all that whole situation. He said, thou will say then unto me, this is Paul writing to the people, he said, thou will say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who has resisted his will? So nobody can resist the will of God. He said, but nay, O man, so Paul gave him an answer, nay, O man, who are thou that replies against God? So we cannot reply against God. We can't say, Lord, you're wrong. And we can't challenge God in anything that he does because he is the creator of the universe. He created everything. You and I, we are all his property. and He can do with us whatever he wants to. He knows what purpose he have called us forth for. Amen. And so again, 
Nay, but O man, who are you that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? So we can't ask God, Why did he do what he do? Has not the potter power over the clay? So we have to understand that God is the potter. We are the clay. He's got power over us. Amen. The same lump to make one vessel to honor and another to dishonor. So God can make whatever he want to make. Amen. And we don't, we don't have the right to question it. So we have to understand that we don't want to contend with God because he's right all the time and we're not going to win. Amen. Even uh, Peter, he wrote in the New Testament, he wrote, he was referring to Paul's uh, letters to the saints. He says, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking of them of these things, and here it is, in which some things are hard to be understood. So this is where we have a problem. We as people think we know everything and we think we understand everything. So we want to know, let you know today that we don't understand everything. So just because we don't understand everything doesn't mean God is wrong. So we have to be careful about coming and contending and striving with God because we don't know everything and we don't understand all of God's purposes. So the best thing that we can do is submit ourselves unto God and say, not my will, but thou I will be done. So anyway, going back to Paul and, and all his epistles, he said he was speaking uh, to the saints of these things. He says, he goes on down and says, in which some things are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle. So people that are unlearned, you don't understand God and you are unstable, you will wrestle with what God does. And we don't want to be found wrestling with what God does. We, If we're wrestling, then we are either unlearned or we're unstable. Amen. They wrestle as they do also with other scriptures. What? Unto their own destruction. So if we're going to contend with God, we're going to do it to our own destruction. If God is not merciful to hold up on, on going through with things with us. But woe unto him that will strive with his maker. We can't strive with God. All we do is humble ourselves and submit to his will and say, Lord, can you help me through this situation? I don't want to blame you for things, why I'm this way. All I know is if you say what I'm doing is wrong, help me to turn. Even in the Old Testament, they would pray, turn me, Lord, and I shall be turned. Save me, Lord, and I shall be saved. So we make our supplication to the Lord. We may not understand everything, but just look to the Lord and say, Lord, help me to make it through this situation. I don't understand it, but you're right all the time. But we don't want to be wrestling with the word of God, wrestling with what God is doing in our life because that lets us know that we don't have good understanding and we are unstable. Amen. Uh, we don't want to wrestle with God because we, he's talking about the scriptures here. And he said, as they do also with other scriptures. Now, the scriptures are from God. The scriptures are God's word. So if you're wrestling with the scriptures, you're wrestling with God. You're contending with God and it's to your own destruction. So we don't want to wrestle and contend with God. We want to submit to God. Lord, I don't understand it, but I love you and I know you're always right. And he'll bring us through every time. He says, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. So we don't want to fall from our steadfastness by, you know, wrestling with things that we don't understand. All we have to do is submit ourselves to the will of God, not reject him, not curse him, but submit ourselves. So sometimes when people find themselves in the plight and they're being um, tested and tried, and and God says that it's wrong, then what they have to do is like, Lord, this is wrong, so I don't want to be against you, so help me to make it through this. Give me power over this temptation. So, so you have to pray that rather than getting angry with God saying, God made me this way, or I was born this way, amen, but God has given us a way out, and so we can't wrestle with God, but we just have to submit ourselves, Lord, if this is wrong, help me to do right. Turn me, Lord, and I shall be turned. Save me, and I shall be saved. But you don't want to wrestle with the scriptures. You don't want to wrestle with God because it says that it's to your own destruction. He said, woe unto him that striveth against his maker. Amen. You can't argue with God about how, you know, why you're being tried the way that you're tried. Just look for victory. Look for God to bring you out. 
Amen. So we have to stop contending with God because he's right all the time. God can do what he wants to do. He fashioned Pharaoh. He hardened Pharaoh's heart so he could get the glory. So God does what he wants to do. He's the creator. So we have to shut our mouths because we don't know nothing. Just submit ourselves to the will of God. Make our supplication to him. Lord, bring me out of this situation still loving you, still trusting you. So we get too proud sometimes as people. We want to make God accountable to us. But God said, who do you think you are? You can do that amongst men, but you can't do that with me because we're not equal. I'm the creator. Amen. So you don't know what you're talking about when you go against God. So submit yourself to God. So don't wrestle. Don't contend with God. He's right all the time. That's the message on today. Amen. So I pray that this message has landed on good ground and that you will receive what God is saying and that you will humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and trust him to bring you out. So Job did the right thing. He said, Lord, I lay my hand on my mouth. I'm vile. You know, I'm nothing. I don't know anything. He said, and I won't answer back. You know, so he understood that he had gotten self-righteous there, you know, and wanting, you know, to God to answer him. But we have to submit ourselves to God and say, Lord, thy will be done, not my will. Amen. Don't contend with God because he's right and we'll never win contending with him. We just have to submit to him. He said, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may lift you up. He may exalt you in due time. So Job came out. He came out all right after he went through what he went through, but he didn't reject God. He didn't say God doesn't exist. He didn't curse God. He didn't understand God, but when God called him on the carpet, he humbled himself. He didn't debate with God. Don't contend with God. He's right all the time. God bless you.